With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. We continue to share our best 11 episodes of 2023, and today we highlight our number 10 episode. Of the over 200 episodes we've aired in the last year, we focused on those which were not a part of a series or a segment of a clinic. Our number 10 episode of 2023 is with Andrew Jackson, defensive line coach at West Virginia. In this episode, Coach Jackson discusses his approach to coaching and utilizing his personnel effectively. He emphasizes the importance of building relationships and understanding each player's strengths and weaknesses. He takes a personalized approach, getting to know each player's personality and learning style, and tailors his coaching methods accordingly. He also emphasizes the importance of creating a positive and interactive environment during walkthroughs and meetings to maximize learning and understanding. Additionally, he highlights the significance of recognizing and respecting the contributions of the support staff within the football program. Overall, he stresses the value of caring for and respecting his players and having a deep understanding of their individual abilities to maximize their potential on the field. This was recorded in person at the New York State High School Football Coaches Association Clinic at Turning Stone Casino. Enjoy. What you see on tape is a direct reflection of what you teach and how you teach. Video is important, but if you don't teach well, you're not going to like what you see on your video. First Down Playbook has been helping coaches teach better for 13 years. It allows you to present installs, playbooks, and practice cards in half the time with NFL quality. Coaching tools like video pairing, a player app, practice schedules, and wristband sheets have made First Down Playbook a program management system with everything in one place. If you're in a position of leadership with your football program, receive a free one-week look at First Down Playbook. Call them at 512 514-6158 or visit them on their website or social media. Mention Coach and Coordinator Podcast or use the coupon code COACH24 to receive a $100 discount off the normal $700 First Down Playbook team membership price. Links and the phone number are in the show notes. As coaches, we know that some of the biggest hurdles to our team success can come from off the field. Your team needs support to tackle the endless list of expenses, uniforms, training equipment, travel, and more. But raising that money can feel like a full-time job. Thankfully, there's Vertical Raise. Vertical Raise is the premier online fundraising platform using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money in less time with a local fundraising coach who works with your team every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser. With options for online donations, digital discount cards, premium product sales, and even spirit shops, Vertical Raise has top-of-the-line solutions for every fundraising style. To find out more, visit verticalraise.com and we'll get you connected with an exclusive offer on your first fundraiser. I have the privilege to sit down with Andrew Jackson, defensive line coach at West Virginia here at the New York State High School Football Coaches Association Clinic. And coach, it's great for you to be here and thank you for taking the time. Oh, no problem. I'm a, I'm a New York State uh, High School Football alum and Section 9 guy, so I'm excited to be back and here to speak. Yeah, it's, you definitely have some New York in your background, the different places that you worked, and uh, I think some great influences too. So when you look at your your start in coaching, first of all, what was it that made you want to be a football coach? Um, honestly, I, I started off wanting to be a school teacher. Um, my head coach Brian Collins, who's now the defensive coordinator at Stony Brook um, uh, University, he gave me an opportunity to come back and get my master's, and I couldn't find a teaching job right out of college. And, I went back and worked with the defensive line, and I, I, I never thought about teaching after that first fall training camp. So, 
Just got in your blood. Just got in my blood, yeah. I, and, you know, if you ask some of my teammates, um, they, they probably would have told you I was going to be a football coach. And I, but I never thought of myself as a coach. I just wanted to be a school teacher and teach phys ed and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've had some great influences. And, and when you look at just the different coaches who have been a part of your career, what are some of the key takeaways or the, the lessons you learned early on that really are part of who you are as a coach today? You know, definitely starting early on working for Brian Collins and Chuck Pirotti, I, 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 uh, I earned some tough skin, you know. I, I earned, you know, I learned how to, how to take some criticism and, and kind of, you know, not worry about the mistakes I was making and push forward and go along. Working with a guy like uh, James Franklin was always taught us uh, how to uh, be accountable and details and doing the small little things right, whether it's, you know, dotting eyes or proper borders on your, on your work, double ch- and triple checking your work. Joe Moorhead, just the confidence he had. Kurt Signetti relating to players. I, I had a chance to work with so many great head coaches that have all taught me little things along the way. Yeah, yeah. And, and before we started going, you said that's a that really is a big part of you being who you are, being able to, to bring that every day to your players. Talk to us a little bit about I guess how that helps you really relate to these guys and get the most out of them. I mean, w- one thing I think that, that young players are today is that they can see through – whether you're putting up a facade or not, I think they could see they could really see through anything and find out who you are as a person rather quickly. I think it's a skill they all have as young people nowadays. And to me, being able to to I know I'm bald headed, but let my hair down and relax and, and really show my weaknesses and show that I can make mistakes, I can laugh, I can be laughed at, we can joke and have fun. I think it lets them put their guard down. It takes away from the business and the pressure of college football today, and let them be regular people too. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit different than. In the past, definitely different than when when I grew up playing the game. I mean, there was there was a definitely a hard edge to a lot of the, the, the coaches. I think though that today, it's that really helps. You know, that's who players are today. They do need to see the real person in you to be able to relate to you. Absolutely, and then you said the, you know the relationship piece is huge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you know, looking at that and how that translates to the field and the and the different things you do. What things now? have really become things that you're, you're known for when people look at how you coach the game and the things that you do. What, what are people interested in the most? I think the, the biggest thing I recognize that I think it's the best, I think it's the best compliment you can earn as a coach is I think oh, guys always uh, express how hard my guys play and how relentless they play. And, you know, there's, a, there's not a particular drill or a scheme or a style that I think I use that's different than anybody else. I think that having a good relationship with those guys and, and then being able to play carefree, they wind up playing more physical and more carefree and not worried about making mistakes. They play a little bit more wide open with more edge. Yeah, and you said you, you before we got going, you had a, a kind of a scientific approach to how you do things and how you set things up. Talk to us a little bit about what that means. I, I think that comes from my teaching background that not all guys learn the same way and not all guys are built the same way. So I don't try to necessarily push them into one way of doing things and I also try to find myself more as a facilitator and organizing the fun and letting things happen organically than I am being so regimented. I, I think that being overly organized and overly processed I think it slows guys down and causes them to think so I kind of let things happen as they go and I also try to use guys strengths to give them confidence as I teach them the game and develop them so guys that are good pass rushers I put you know young guys I put them in on third down bigger kids that come in and you know they're they're not really great passers that put them in a rundown so they gain confidence yeah with that approach you do start to play more guys and I think that's important to them how, how do you I guess still keep that competition right because I've, I've found that before like I try to create as many roles as I can I did find like in some places if I did it too early like too many guys got a taste of it and felt like they own that and mm. maybe relaxed a little bit so how do you still keep that edge with them oh well Number one thing I do is I, I play different. I play a lot of guys, and I use different lineups. And we do have uh, we package things, but I, as guys make plays in games, they get more reps. So, and I tell guys, give me your best forty. So, I try to let guys produce in that forty and play wide open, and know that that if they play wide open, I'll keep them fresh and get more guys in the game. I think at defensive line, it's easy to play a lot of guys once they realize that. You know, the guy to their left and their right is their teammate, and then if that guy plays better, they'll play better. You know, there's nothing better than not being able to double-team anybody up front or not being able to game plan around on one side of the ball. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if, if everybody on the line is making plays, then I think, and, and you're playing, and you're fresh and not tired, I think guys realize that they're, they're better players at the end of the day. 
Yeah, you mentioned that, you know, you, you don't try to force guys into things and you want to let them be who they are as players. It reminds me of a, you know, episode we did with Joe Thomas where he talked about his best coaches didn't force everybody to be the same. They found that, you know, bodies aren't all built the same and they would do things different. And now I think that, I mean, it's definitely easier to take a cookie cutter approach and do the same thing with all guys. It, it becomes uh, almost more responsibility on you, yeah. the way that you're able to look at it. Definitely, um, from, from a number of things, not only just te- technically, um, the way guys uh, respond to feedback and criticism. I know some guys you, that, that respond better when you yell at them. There's guys that you know if you yell, they're gonna shut down. So I also rely on my assistant. You know, my, I have an assistant at GA who does a great job. I also rely on him a little bit so I get, I'm giving guys one-on-one attention, and he's picking up the group, the slack of the group, or vice versa. So it takes a village. It's not just me. I have a good support system from the head coach, coordinator on down that kind of helped me get that done as well. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm sure, like, with you being able to tune into their different skill sets, it is an opportunity to look at some matchups too and how different guys maybe are going to fit better against a certain type of lineman, et cetera. How much time do you spend or how do you break that down and really determine, like, you know, I think – this guy and these packages, personnel-wise, not schemes, but personnel, matchup-wise, are going to work best for us? Oh, I spend a lot of time. That's that's the bulk of my uh, Sunday preparation after we put the previous week to bed is is finding out where my guys have success. And like, what what are they bad at that we're really good at or, 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 or you know, a way of thinking? What do we do really well that can that can exploit them? And that, that is a little bit of a work, but I think that also helps me. That, that's the reason why I can play more guys is because I kind of have those – ideas in the back of my mind going into the game yeah yeah now then when it gets to the, the scheme how are you fitting the scheme to the personnel too right because I think now all this starts to, to blend together so we usually you know whether it's before spring football starts or before training camp we put the board up with the players and our, our coordinator Jordan Leslie does a great job of this what do we have what do we have what can we do and we go from there we we, we love to be four two five and four down but hey no, this this is what we're looking like right now. This is what this is the pieces we have. This is what we can do well. We we try to put our our kids in position to succeed because ultimately, if they play well, we, we stay employed. Right, you know? right, <laughs> right. Absolutely. So, uh, what does the meeting room look like for you as as you're, you it's, know, going through and looking at a game plan or evaluating these guys, giving them feedback whether it's practice game? What's the meeting room like? For the most part, you know, it starts off pretty loose. I just start off conversational. Sometimes I'll throw in a, a nugget of information, whether it's a life skill or a current event. I try to keep my guys up on what's going on. For the most part, with, with the, now with the um, name, image, likeness, most of it's been financial nuggets. And then obviously some current events, what's going on in the world, whether it's negative or positive, kind of loosen the room up. And then we kind of get into the opponent and the, and the game prep. And a, a lot of times uh, what's been great is for the past couple of years at West Virginia is I've had older players that will also introduce I, things they saw already in the game plan and already started watching film and say, hey, coach, I think we can do this. I can do that. I think we can do that. It was a little bit of exchange of information before we get into the, the game plan of the nuts and the bolts, which is it's great because I always tell my players, I'll learn as much from them as I will teach them. You know, there's always a teachable moment, and I'm not the type of person that thinks I know everything. So I, I'll, learn, I'll learn from my players as well. Mm-hmm. What, what's the, the feedback look like in your room? And, you know, especially when you're looking at game film, how, how do you approach, you know, getting the most out of that? Is it watching all the film? Are you picking certain things out? You know, what what things do you point out and how do you handle, you know, both the positive and the negatives? Sure. Um, from watching the whole thing, like the only time we watch everything is we watch our entire practice for the most of the run plays. We'll get into some pass protection kind of things. Uh, we'll pick and choose those things. We'll watch the entire game that we played the Saturday or whatever before, and then I'll pick specific things we want to show from a game plan perspective. But the feedback and, and the corrections are a little tough. Again, you got to know who you're talking to. The only time I really get excited is lack of effort and, and repeat mistakes. Um, I, you know, those those kind of things drive me nuts. But, again, I no more things I try to teach and not demean. I think when you demean kids and bring them down, I think you lose them. You know, I wasn't coached that way, so I, I don't I don't necessarily believe in that. I, I don't cuss at kids or, or call them out of their name, things like that. But I'm very direct in what I'm, what I'm looking for as far as the result. Now, some guys, obviously we're talking about guys with different skill sets, do things a little bit differently, but the results have to be there at the end of the mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the approach too, right? Like learning how these guys respond to things. Mm-hmm. Uh, that just doesn't happen. So how do you really start to get to know who those guys are so you know, I don't want to say know what buttons to push, but you know how to handle those guys. You know like this guy is going to respond to things in a certain way and this guy maybe can 
take me getting on them a little bit more kind of just sit back and observe a little bit before I kind of jump in, especially with new guys. Obviously, you get to know them in the recruiting process as well, so you kind of know a little bit about them, but I kind of observed the first couple things, you know, first couple times before I get excited or, or see how kids respond to certain adversities or see that respond to success too. I think success is just as poisoning as adversity sometimes with certain kids, but um, and then I, I try to see them outside of the game too, so I try to ask them what their interests are outside of football. We, we hang out at my, my house to you know, play in Madden tournaments, we go bowling. So we kind of interact with each other outside of football to kind of grow the relationship a little bit so that when, when they do know I'm being hard on them or, or it's not something they necessarily want to hear, they know I'm coming from a place of this person that cares about them. You know, I think that they, they can handle it when they know you care. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When you look at, you know, the getting them out on a field, doing walkthroughs, right? I think, I think walkthrough takes a little bit of a – a thought process and it's an art I've seen some done very well and I've seen some done very poorly but mm-hmm. for you what what makes a good walk through how are you going to handle that time to get the most out of it might have to be interactive whether it's on a powerpoint and we're walking through in the room and it's digital and the slides are moving or I have guys that are playing at positions and walking through the offensive play but if we're just lined up on trash cans the way my guys think and operate they're not going to get through they're not going to get much out of it they got to be up moving, hearing me speak, and seeing it as, as it's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, uh, old uh, five trash cans walk through for the D-line with my group is going to be highly productive. Yeah, what do those slides look like? You said the slide's moving. So I, I literally uh, cut out the play, like uh, players look like they're Madden characters, and I get them to move in the, in the formation or in the, in the play call so they can visualize it. My guys are such video game oriented they, that, that that's what works for them. Yeah, and yeah, you do that in PowerPoint? Yeah, do that in PowerPoint. Yeah, it's very tedious now. My, my assistant does most of it now, but <laughs> I, I, I had my time uh, putting that stuff together. But he, he does a great job with it, and the guys the guys seem to seem to take hold of it better than even myself drawing or, you know, again, those those five trash cans, that, you know, old school ones. It's hard to visualize trash cans being something, right? Yeah, it I is. Mean, it, it it is. It's very limited. Yeah, and I struggled with it as a player, too. I, I mean, I never told anybody that, but, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> kind of took a while. Like, okay, wait. All right, yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned before we got going the, the importance, especially early on in, in your career, of being willing to jump in and do the little things. I mean, you know, we all want to advance to having our own room or being a coordinator, whatever it might be, but that's fine. It doesn't start there. It starts with little things. Yeah, I mean, like – I think when, when guys that have rolled their sleeves up and, and gotten dirty and you know what everybody in the kind of the organizations had to do to, to win a football game, whether it's the training staff taping ankles, whether it's the weightlifting coach, the strength coaches lifting weights early in the morning or the flipping laundry. Like when you understand what those people have to do and you appreciate what's going on around you as well as the work, you, the little things you have to do, you know, how, how am I going to outwork every other D-line coach in the country that wants, that wants my job or every other rising star that wants my job or or every, every guy to recruit the same player I have to do. I mean, when you when you put those fine details in and roll these up and work, I think good things will happen. And and, and again, to, to say that being a uh, power five coach is the ultimate success, no, it's, it's whatever you determine you want to want to work towards. To me, I was I was very happy at, at LIU, at CW Post. I could have stayed there forever. It wasn't until head coach pushed me out and said, hey, why don't you go see what something else looks like where the door started opening up. But again, I didn't, I didn't try to change and deviate from – from my from the little things I did and the work that I did. Yeah, in looking at the little things, what's one of those little things? One of those jobs that maybe you didn't expect to learn as much from, but really actually made a difference in teaching you how that fits into the big picture and what the big picture looks like and whatever that might have been. Oh, I think the, the 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 hardest thing was when I had when I was at LIU when I was a coach. I was responsible for putting the practice gear out and then scooping it up. And then, and then putting it away and then also putting the practice tape up. So now that I'm, I'm a coach at a Power 5 institution in West Virginia, we have an equipment manager with full staff. We have a film crew with full staff. Well, now to me I have an extra hour and a half of work that I had time to do something different with football that when I first started I didn't have. So now I can I could get working on my game planner. And I could I could uh, spend an hour with my wife after practice before we watch practice tape. All those little things are like, wow. I remember back when I didn't have this extra hour, so I could utilize it and maximize it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you definitely learn to appreciate that, too. I think, you know, being at, at the, the lower levels, you wear a lot of hats, oh, yeah. right? And, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it does take away from I mean, everybody would rather be learning, watching film, and learning the game, but you learn the ins and outs of 
how a football program runs. This is going to make a difference for you as you progress through that. You understand that and how things should be done a certain way, and uh, you learn that. So maybe when you're in charge of something like that, you know why that's important. You can really Absolutely. emphasize that. Absolutely. I, I think as a as being a, a, a power five position coach, I've learned to value those folks' time. You know, I, there's no reason for me not to say hello to the equipment guys or go down there and check on and see what they're doing or, you know, have a good joke with the trainers or the film guys. Like, I walk around and talk to everybody. And I, That's right. I, I, I recognize and I understand exactly what they're going through on a daily basis. Yeah. And people don't understand that that, that adds up to wins and losses as well. It, it does. That support staff being on the same page. Yeah, you got to treat them well. I mean, they, they do play a very important role. And as you said, if you've done the little things, if you had to do what they were doing before because – you worked at a place that didn't have those resources. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, you got to treat them right. And I think, you know, seeing the big part that they play and it just adds to that that feeling of of team, right? Like, yes. No, everybody out there is important. Maybe the role isn't as big. Maybe they're not in the spotlight. But yeah, you know, that guy who sets up my drill and then clears the field for me, like that that's big. That's big. That's huge. And you know, it's uh, as these, as the staffs are, are growing in size. I mean. There's more, you know, I get the chance to work with 50 plus people, I think, in a football building every day. It's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Well, when you look at all the things you do, coach, whatever that might be, on or off the field, what would you say is the, the one thing you do that really gives your guys the winning edge? I think I care and respect what they do. I think I think I take a step back and understand that it's really hard to be a 18 to 22 year old kid in the power five football with the pressure the uh, the opportunity to do things, the potential, the pressure, like I respect what those kids do, and I, and I enjoy being around them, and I and I'm downright envious of the opportunity they have to do what they do. That's great. What's the best way for our listeners to connect with you? I'm at Coach Jax J X D L on Twitter is the best way. My my uh, DMs are always open. I know young coaches want to reach out, recruits and players. It's kind of like, it's a little tricky, but if you're in the coaching profession, I definitely can help you out or and things like that. Yeah, well, I appreciate you taking the time here and sitting down. It was great to have you at Lawrence first and goal last year, and great to see you here in person. Always. I can't wait to go back. I, I was at the inaugural Lawrence first and goal, and I, I'll keep doing it as long as Coach Luce will have me. 